Hello, snowmobile fans. We're in the Yamaha jacket today. And we'll be talking about a Yamaha, a 1992. Now, this would be classified as a classic snowmobile. Classic snowmobiles are more modern. They are newer than the vintage era. Classic snowmobiles run from about 1986 through about the, you know, millennial year of 2000. And I'm so proud to have this this thing because it is credited at starting an era. Now, this is a 1992 Yamaha. And until then, in the late 80s, Yamaha was making, you know, family-oriented machines. They were, they were sort of getting some static that they didn't have a muscle sled. Well, this was their answer. And it put an exclamation point on the topic. Indeed, it started what we call the muscle class era. All right. Full of, of technology and interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, d design issues. Uh, let's talk about that. What is special about this particular VMAX 4 in its inaugural year? Well, let's take a look at the, at the skis. That is to say that they put a lightweight ski on here and uh, and uh, not only that, but this is the very first production sled that had ski skins. Ski skins. Now, uh, that, uh, that, that, that was factory. That, that was actually factory. Now, <laughs> another thing to notice, of course, is the, uh, is the pink coloration. It, I don't know what was the deal in the early 90s, but pink was the hot color. And uh, Yamaha was not the only manufacturer to, uh, to em employ that. Now, let's take a look at the business end of this bad boy. This is the first machine that had a digital CDI. And look at that. What do we see here? One, two, three, and four cylinders. A four-cylinder motor. Quite frankly, not seen since what 1971 the arctic cat uh the arctic cat um uh, uh thundercat you know had one variant that had a kawasaki four-cylinder engine okay and uh then fast forward to 1992 yamaha put this uh this four-cylinder two-stroke in in play in fact it didn't appear again at least not in the yamaha line in fact any line until 2003. Now that was the RX1, you know, the, the four-stroke engine back in 20, uh, 2003, excuse me. So let's take a look at, uh, at this engine. Um, it looks like there's two twin cylinders kind of made it together, but it's very unique in, in several respects. And uh, first and foremost is that there's no clutch at the end of the crankshaft. Now, why? Because Arctic Cat learned that back in 71. You can't have a huge, long motor like that and spin a, 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 a primary clutch because there's so much, you know, torsional uh, stress on the crank. It's almost impossible to keep the crank. So here's what Yamaha did, and you can't see it, was that they put a gear drive in front of the motor. It's all hidden by this, this, uh, this shroud and stuff here, but there is a jack shaft that goes in front of the motor. That clutch there is not hooked up to the motor, but rather a secondary jack shaft. In fact, that gear box is reduced, you know, the speed is reduced 90, 95%. In other words, the motor is running faster than the, the, the crankshaft is running faster than that jack shaft. All right, and that allowed them to make this go fast motor here that, uh, that delivered the, the goods here. Um, this thing dynoed out at about 134 horsepower. This is a 743 cc, I believe. It's a 750 class uh, uh, machine. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a great performer. Now, let's take a look at the front end here. Now, this is not the stock pipe. This says PSI. When I purchased this machine, 
it had this aftermarket setup with two pipes and, and, a, and, a, and an aftermarket can. Um, fortunately, the fellow kept the original pipes, so I guess I, I got them in a box if, uh, if I ever want to go back to stock. The other innovation on this motor is its use of Makuni TM uh, carburetors on a rack. Now look at me, I'm going to press this throttle, look at this. And look at the effect here. In other words, see that shaft that's moving back and forth? That's all you're moving. Instead of pulling in the old days all these cables to an individual carburetor, this goes to what they call a rack setup. And it's lovely efficient and it's a very, very light pull. Uh, you know, this set the tone for the other manufacturers going, going forward. So rack slide, um, uh, you know, carburetors. So all of this technology came out in one, in one, uh, in one swoop here. And, uh, you know, I just had to have that first year. Now let's uh, take a look at, uh, at this machine in, in other respects. Is this a survivor? Is this correct? Well, no, I've already told you the pipes were changed out. Um, there's uh, studs on the track. The previous owner also ceramic coated the skis. Look at how shiny they are. And uh, I asked him why, and he said, well, I, uh, I just don't like rust. You know how it is, you come in, there's snow in the skis, it melts, you get, you know, rusty skis. So uh, he took the liberty of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, plating, uh, ceramic coating those skis, and I thought, wow, that looks good. I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it. So not exactly, uh, you know, a survivor, but an, uh, an original example of, uh, of a first year Yamaha. So I hope that, uh, that uh, you've learned something today about Yamaha. Uh, in 92, they came up with this, and of course, the next year, all the other three, from Articat to Skidoo to Polaris, they came up with, uh, with triples as a response. And uh, this thing was focused uh, as a trail sled, you know what I mean? It, it, you know, you'd think that this would be a lake racer, but the truth is, I've talked to many, many people at shows and, and, and events that say, you know, this was a, a decent uh, trail sled, rocket fast, but uh, it, was a, it was a dual purpose machine, not just for that drag strip, uh, uh, you know, fanatic. So, uh, so thanks for, for looking at this video. I wanna thank you and uh, we'll see you next time.